Hello, welcome back to Tea Time in Paris. Today I have a very exciting unboxing for you. It's from Chanel's latest collection, the 24A Métis Dad Collection. Now, Chanel's Métis Dad collections have always been my favorite. I always felt like Métis Dad is sort of like a hybrid between ready to wear and works of art. However, I haven't bought anything new from the store for quite a while now. I think with the price increases that Chanel has been kind of putting through over the past few years, just forcing it down our throats, I, I just feel like there aren't that many bags that are still worth buying given the new price points. I mean, I never really liked the word worth because it's very subjective. It depends on the individual's value, your preferences, and every individual's financial situation is different at a given point in time. So the word worth buying is fairly subjective. Having said all that, there are still a few bags that I consider worth buying or at least within realm of reasonableness. For example, the mini flaps is one of those styles. Even though it's not officially part of the classic flap lineup, but its timelessness is no less so in the eyes of Chanel fans. And the price point that it's at right now for these mini flaps is about half the price of the small and medium classic flaps. And it's also a little bit lower than some of the seasonal bags that are coming out from Chanel these days. So in my eyes, the mini flaps is definitely still one of the Chanel bags that are worth buying. So personally, I have an obsession with Chanel tweed. If you have been watching my channel, that should come as no surprise. I just think that tweed from Chanel, especially the Lusage tweeds, are just works of art. But not all tweed is the same, right? I've spoken about this before. My first Chanel bag that I bought and sold, it was in a pattern of tweed, which I believe would be classified as fantasy tweed, but it was no special Lusage tweed. It was probably machine woven and mass produced. But nevertheless, I really liked that pattern. That cutaway really spoke to me and that's why I fell for it. After I sold it, I no longer had a tweed piece in my collection and I just couldn't stand not having a Chanel tweed piece in my collection. So I was just really waiting for that special tweed piece to come back into my collection. And I knew I had to be patient and wait because I didn't really want to buy something from the pre-loved markets because a tweed piece from Chanel has a very special place in my heart and I just didn't want it to come from the pre-loved market. I really wanted a new from store tweed piece. So when I first saw the product drop on the Chanel app catalog, I instantly fell in love with this color and pattern. So when the product dropped on the Chanel app catalog, it was during the Memorial Day weekend and I was in Paris at the time. So I immediately thought of asking my essay in Paris who has always been very nice to me, even though I haven't been a very frequent customer in recent years. But it was a few days before the products, the bags actually got to the store, so I couldn't get it in Paris. But anyways, that wasn't a big deal because with the recent price harmonization exercises that Chanel was doing, price harmonization, I would have only saved a few hundred dollars if I were able to buy it in Paris it wasn't a huge, huge difference. So I waited for the product launch in the US. The official date was June 10th this year, I believe. And the weekend before June 10th, I did some running around town to try to track down this specific tweed piece because I knew that they wouldn't produce that many pieces for this specific tweed in the mini style. I've already unboxed this, if you can tell by the sloppy repackaging of the box. So why don't I go ahead and insert my original unboxing video and then we can open this one together. So this is actually my second time unboxing this handbag. Not this particular one, but um, this style. Unfortunately, the first one I had to send it back and I'll share my story with you in just a few minutes. 
and the first time that i got the bag i had a larger box it came with a larger box and the second time this sa actually gave me a smaller box that fit just the mini which i actually like better because it doesn't take up as much room in my wardrobe and i also asked her to give me a um, classic uh, dust bag um, as opposed to the uh, black one that usually comes with minis uh, she was kind enough to accommodate so now i have two dust bags with this handbag the two things that were missing from this packaging were the chanel et moi handbook which explains the warranty and how to care for your handbag and also the little piece of black felt that usually separates the front flap I did go back to the boutique to get those two items back from the SA another day. All right, so why don't we go ahead and open this one? Love a second unboxing. It's so satisfying. All right. And these are the tissue papers. They've already been kind of wrinkled by me. Here's the actual bag. It sort of matches my flowers today, pink and blue. Okay, let me give it a close up. Remove this felt. And the inside, I mean, obviously I already opened it and I tied a ribbon around it. Um, it's made in France, if you can see it here, which is very special and i'm not surprised that this is made in france because this is one of the lusage tweed mini bags and i think with the lusage tweed minis they tend to make these in france and the sticker is still intact which will peel it together so actually this is the third time i unbox this bag and there's a bit of a story to how i finally settled on this particular bag i had to send the first one back because i was very unsatisfied with the service that i got when i purchased the first one if you're not interested in the story you can skip ahead so the story goes the weekend of the launch date i went to three different chanel stores they either did not have a stock yet or they already sold out of the ones that they received. So each store was only allocated one to two bags with the exception of the flagship store, which was allocated three pieces of this particular tweet in the mini style. But when I went there, they already sold out all three. Actually, the first time I went there, they said they did not have any in stock yet. So I was told to go back um, during the week. But the second time I went, I think they said they already sold out all three of the minis in this tweet that they received. So they weren't going to receive any more of this particular bag. So this was still the weekend. On Sunday, I finally got to the Bloomingdale store. There was a handbag boutique on the ground floor. At the Bloomingdale store, the system showed that they had one of this bag in this tweet and in the mini style. But the SA couldn't find it. She didn't know why the system had one, but she wasn't in the store. So I left my contact information and I was called the following Tuesday. Uh, and she said that she had the bag. So I immediately went in. When I went in, the bag wasn't at a boutique. The SA had to call upstairs to someone else. And then I had to wait for like, I don't know, five minutes. So finally someone came down with the bag and they had not heard the bag. They hadn't heard the bag as this without a box or dust bag or any packaging whatsoever. So my immediate impression was that the bag didn't look super brand new. But I mean, like, there was nothing wrong with the bag, but it didn't look like it came straight from a box. So I asked the SA whether it was from a new shipment and she looked at me and said, yes, it was from a new shipment. It wasn't a display bag. That's what she told me. So at the time, I just took it at face value. I mean, why wouldn't I? So I tried on the bag a few times in, in the boutique and I compared it to the walk, which was also in this specific tweet, which is also a very beautiful bag and it's $2,000 cheaper than the mini. So I really considered it. But ultimately, I decided on the mini because 
I was never really a fan of the walks and I wasn't going to settle on a walk for such a special tree. And I also didn't have a, a mini rectangular in my collection. I bought the bag the same day, but since I was rushing back to work for a meeting, I didn't really have the time to wait for her to finish packing it up. So even though I live literally right across the street from Bloomingdale's, I took her up on her offer to send it to my apartment so I didn't have to wait. So now this is where things went downhill with that specific purchase. So that evening when I got home, I was reviewing the pictures from trying on the bag in the store and I noticed that a bag that I tried on had one of those anti-theft locks attached to the chain, which was quite odd for a bag that she claimed was from a new shipment and wasn't a display bag because those anti-theft locks are usually placed on display bags only, right? So then it hit me that every time I went into the boutique and she was making a phone call upstairs, she was likely calling the ready-to-wear boutique that was located on the fourth floor of Bloomingdale's. And that would explain everything. I mean, that explained why the first time I went in on Sunday, the system showed that they had one bag, but she just couldn't find it in the boutique because it was on display at the ready-to-wear boutique upstairs. And also explain why the, when the person came down with the bag the second time that I went, went in, she just handed it back to her without any dust bag or box or any sort of packaging, and it had an anti-theft lock attached to it. So now I was super disappointed that she lied to my face. I mean, it's kind of like insulting my intelligence, right? It wasn't that hard to figure out. But I was ready to take the bag anyways because it was so hard to find it. And maybe the only reason I could find it was because it was on the fourth floor ready to wear boutique where not that many people visited. And then I waited for the bag to arrive at my apartment. It didn't arrive on the same day, which was probably fine because she said that it might have been too late for the same day delivery, even though my apartment was literally across the street, but fine. Um, and so I waited the next day. I went to work and then when I came home from work, there was still no bag. I texted her right away. I asked her straight up, did you send the bag out? Because if you didn't and it's still in the boutique, I'll come in and pick it up tomorrow. So the only thing she texted back was, oh, I'm sorry, this boutique is closed now. So I'll check tomorrow and let you know where the bag is. And I'm thinking, really, you can't even tell me whether you shipped it out? I mean, that's not something that's super hard to remember, right? From what she told me, this was the only one she had at the time, apart from another one that she sold a few days ago. So it's not like she was selling dozens of these every day. So the next day, she didn't text me back proactively in the morning, so I had to follow up around noon. And like I expected, the bag was still in the boutique, so I ended up going back to pick up the bag. And there was no apologies or anything. At this point, I was not very happy, but I was still prepared to just write this off as a one-time kind of bad experience. And I was very excited to unbox the bag the next day. And I fully expected her to package it up nicely, given that she would have felt a little bit bad at least for forgetting to ship my bag out. But when I was unboxing it, I was disappointed yet again because she didn't bother to package it up nicely and properly. She merely shoved the bag inside a dust bag with the chains tucked inside of the bag. There was no wrapping of the chains by, with tissue paper like they would normally do. And there was no tissue papers inside of the bag. And also there was no piece of felt that separated the flap of the bag with the bag. I mean, I know I was being a little bit picky, but that's what I would expect from Chanel at these price points. Now, I don't know if this is because I'm used to the packaging of the Paris boutiques at Chanel because I've only really bought Chanel bags from Paris. This is the first Chanel bag that I bought from a non-Paris boutique. But I've watched unboxing videos from other US-based YouTubers who have unboxed bags from US boutiques and they definitely had their chains properly wrapped and all the other shenanigans. And for me, this just felt like a very unluxury experience. I mean, at this point, I knew that I was getting a display bag, but the least she could do was pretend that it wasn't one, given that she lied to me to my face about it not being a display bag. 
So this is when I decided that I would try to hunt down another one of these minis and I would go and return the first one because at this price point, I'm just not ready to buy something from an essay who isn't professional and who doesn't deserve the commission. So that weekend, I made it my mission to hunt down another one of these. So I went to almost every Chanel boutique in town. And luckily, there are quite a few Chanel boutiques in New York City. And I finally found this specific one at the Madison Avenue boutique. And I think it was still sitting there because the Madison Avenue boutique is actually not a very big boutique and it doesn't get a lot of foot traffic. It doesn't even have ready to wear in the store. So a lot of tourists don't even go there. It was still sitting on the display shelves when I got there. So this is also a display bag, but this one actually looks a bit better than the one I got the first time from Bloomingdale's. So the first one I got had um, a piece of little piece of yarn sticking out from the center top. I mean, it wasn't a defect or anything. It was just the way that the piece of yarn was kind of woven in on that patch of the tweed. And another thing that I noticed was that um, the other bag also had a little little kind of bubbles um, on the the CC turn knock. I hoped that it was just the, the stickers and when I peel it off, it just wouldn't be there, but I wasn't 100% sure. This one just looked like it was a lot um, better overall. I mean, not like a lot, a lot better, but this one just looked like it was a little bit newer and more well handled. The most important thing is that the SA that I bought this one from was so much nicer than the one at Bloomingdale's and she's just so much more professional and it's just what you would expect of a Chanel SA. And when I purchased this one, she gave me an extra dust bag. So I have two dust bags. I have the, the black one, which usually comes with the mini and the classic ones, which usually only comes with the small and medium classic flaps. And she also registered me for the five year warranty, the Chanel Moi warranty that came out a few years ago. And it goes with all handbag purchases and the wallet on chain. So it covers the hardware and pretty much anything except for normal wear and tear. Really important to do that because it basically registers your serial number that's attached to your bag in the Chanel system and you get an email with that. And obviously the Bloomingdale SA forgot to do that. So I thought that was a major oversight along with all the other poor service points that I already mentioned. So now let's take the time to admire this close up. If you watched my previous video on the 24A Métier Dial collection, you'd probably already know the story and background of this tweet. I love this color and the heather flower blossom landscapes in the countryside that this specific tweet is inspired by. There's also a painting by the Impressionist era French painter Gaston Anglade on this exact landscape, the countryside with green grass and pink heather blossoms. So if you remember from the runway show, there is a green tweed jacket that is one of the main tweeds this season from Lusage and this pink tweed. They are both kind of sister tweeds because they're both inspired from the same landscape, which is the Heather Blossom landscapes in the English countryside. And I think in French it's called Le Paysage au Bruyère. And Bruyère is the Heather flowers and Paysage is basically landscape. So why I'm talking about that is because the green tweed from the Seasons Made Here Dial collection, the green jacket, is inspired from the same sub-theme of the English countryside. And the green one is supposed to represent the green grass and this pink tweed is supposed to represent the heather flowers um, in, in the countryside. So it happened that when I was searching for the term Le Paysage au Bruyère, I found this painting by Gaston Anglade who actually painted a lot of the paintings inspired by the same theme. And one such painting was actually at an antique store near our apartment in Paris. So I took it as a sign that I should go ahead and buy that painting because I've always really liked landscape paintings, especially landscapes of English and French countrysides with green and pink flowers. Like that's 
it's just totally me. That's totally something I would admire. Like if I go to a museum and look at impressionist paintings, like those are the kinds of paintings that I would be drawn to. But let's be honest, I can't afford a Monet or a Renoir. But a painting from the 19th century that costs 1600 euros that I really like, that I can afford. So since the green tweed Chanel coat from this year's Métier d'As season is a bit outside my price point at $15,000, I might as well get the painting. I just find it so funny and ironic that an Impressionist era painting is several times cheaper than a Chanel handbag that's inspired from the same theme in the painting. I mean, what kind of world do we live in right now? Let's just think about that for a second. Now I'll also insert some moss shots of the bag. So I don't really like uh, crossbody bags um, and this is mainly a crossbody bag with a very long chain. So I'll probably um, just always kind of tie the chains up inside with the piece of ribbon to make it a shorter chain to wear as a shoulder bag. Of course you can also get one of those uh, clips that uh, clip the chains inside but I've been hearing that Chanel stopped giving them out because they damaged the chains and I can see why because those metals like metal on metal is and if they're not the same metal they're probably going to oxidize differently and I don't know what that does to the leather that's interwoven in it so I don't want to try that I'm just gonna kind of tie the ribbon which I'm completely fine with but of course you can also crisscross the chains inside to shorten it without using any tools. I just don't know if that would damage the bag um, and I don't know if that'll make the flaps start winging on the sides. Uh, I don't have any experience with that so if any of you have experience with maneuvering the chains to to kind of crisscross them inside and you can tell me if that damages the fabs or not uh, I would really love to know all right so now it's time to peel the sticker off together it's probably one of the most satisfying moments of the video all right it's so shiny isn't it so this is like a I think it's a light gold it's a light shiny gold hardware and I'm just gonna pull the chains out so you can see it clearly so this is the chain and they are kind of gold light gold shiny gold chains and I did notice that uh, some people have commented on this the mini rectangular chains like they like to twist out of place um, pretty easily uh, but it's sort of easy to twist them back um, but yeah, so the chain is really gorgeous and also one of the reasons I like the mini better than the walk is because the chains on the walk is thinner and this is more of a proper uh, proper chain width and I like the thicker chains than the thinner ones in general. I haven't used this bag yet and I don't plan on using it super often. To me, this is an object of art. It's to be admired just like the painting and this is a very special tweet it's one of the few from this Métier d'As season that's a Lusage tweet so I talked about this in my last video as well there there are only a few tweets each season especially from Métier d'As season that are conceived at Lusage and it's 100% hand woven at the atelier and this is one of them and this is the only Lusage tweed from this season that was made into a bag. The green one that I showed earlier was not made into a bag as far as I know. And there are some embroidered ones that are probably made by Atelier Montex, like the Tea Time Mini and the Black and White Sequin Houndstooth Mini that came out this season. They're both super, super exquisite with the price to come with it as well because they're both price upon request so I would expect those to be in the five figures. But for tweed fabrics, this is the only one of the special Lusage tweed, the special Atelier tweeds that was made into a bag. So if you look closely, it's very textured and very kind of complex looking. And it was said that there are at least 15 different threads 
that go into um, making this specific pattern of the tweet so the different kinds of threads get woven together by hand to make this specific pattern. And that's what differentiates this from other Chanel tweets that are perhaps the plain tweets or the fantasy tweets that are more standardized and machine woven. And you can sort of tell by how complex looking they are or how simplistic looking they are. Um, the fantasy tweets, even though they look amazing as well, there's always something that looks more standardized and more uniform to those tree patterns than the ones that are hand woven at Lusage. But you can tell that every patch is sort of different. There's some variation to the specific patch at like each section because they are not machine made. They were not calibrated to look exactly the same at each kind of each patch. And that's what made the Lusage tweets so special. I'm just super satisfied just looking at this tweet. Even if I only wear it once in a while, I think it's super worth it just to have it in my collection. And the fact that this particular bag is only a few hundred dollars more expensive than the other minis, and it's not one of those price upon request bags from Chanel, just makes it so much better because I just think it's much better value. If there is such a thing as Chanel these days, but then again, value is subjective, right? To me, this particular tweet in this color and this pattern and the complexity of it all and the beautiful background and the painting that it's inspired by, all these just make it worth every penny. All right, this sums up today's unboxing video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you're not a subscriber yet, please click on that subscribe button now. It would really help me a lot. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.